This episode of D News is brought to you by Full Sail University. People ask all the time why we are exploring space and if that money could help people on Earth. And I am here to tell you, it already does help. Hi guys, I'm Trace. Thanks for watching D News. One of the biggest questions we get whenever we do space stories is why are people spending all this money on space travel? And I'm here to tell you, this does a crap ton of stuff for you here on Earth. And I'm not just talking about stupid stuff like batteries, eyeglasses, GPS navigation, weather satellites, global telecommunications, you know, who needs those things, right? In 1962, NASA created a program of offices specifically dedicated to track technology utilization and industry applications of NASA efforts. Since 1960, in 1976, they published an issue of what they call spin-off every year, cataloging nearly 1,800 projects. The projects are commercial ventures using tech either wholly developed by NASA, created in partnership or by contract with NASA, or using NASA patents, experience, technology, research, personnel, data, etc. Basically, if NASA wasn't around, many of these techs probably wouldn't be either. One that caught my eye from the 2013 issue of spin-off was the space shuttle main engines inspiring new solar power plants. It may not seem immediately obvious, but it stuck with me. An SSME would kick on in temperatures as low as negative 423 Fahrenheit and burn as hot as 6,000 Fahrenheit, hotter than the boiling point of iron. It was built for NASA, but the company that built it, now owned by Pratt & Whitney, took the experience of working with superheated materials and turned it into a 110 megawatt solar plant, which powers 75,000 homes in Nevada. Sunlight is concentrated onto a single point at the top of a tower and superheated salt is used to create steam and turn turbines. They created a company called Solar Reserve which is now opening plants all over the world and driving down solar costs. If you're feeling distracted, another NASA spin-off might help. Unique Logic created a game that helps you learn to pay attention by monitoring your brain waves. See, NASA scientists know that too much automation makes the mind wander and they wanted pilots to have an automated system that could tell if they were distracted. If a pilot wanted too far off task, the flight simulator would release more controls to manual, forcing them to focus. They did this by monitoring their brain waves. If they were on task, the sim would take over more controls, letting them free up to do other things. This was in the 1980s, by the way. Today, the technology has been adapted for video gaming, the nuclear power industry, US Olympic sports, and even NASCAR. Speaking of sporting events, another spin-off is the Gigapan. You've probably seen these online. They're giant images taken from mountaintops or building spires or at events which let you zoom in seemingly impossible amounts to see shoes or read newspapers or find your face in a crowded stadium. The technology was originally developed for use on the Mars rovers Spirit and Opportunity. It showed up in spin-off in 2008 when Gigapan began marketing the technology to consumers and event planners. It works by taking hundreds of photos and then stitching them together using software. It creates a very compact system, perfect for space travel, and creates giant images which are great for analyzing alien planets. And that's just three of these amazing technologies. Software has been designed to test the control of spacecrafts long before takeoff, and that inspired bank fraud protection. Software for analyzing satellite images of stars was pointed at the human brain to help detect Alzheimer's in MRI scans. The number of technologies touched by man exploration of space is incredible. So next time someone writes, what a waste in the comments of a space video, link them to this video right now. What's your favorite space technology? I think mine might be the LED lights that help plants grow. More food for everybody. Tell us yours down below. None of these texts would be possible without software to run the system, and we need people to write that software. Full Sail University in Florida offers courses to help train tech professionals by blending code and real-world experience. Students of Full Sail have hands-on access to technology on their very first day. They get discounted laptops and all the software that they need to earn degrees in software, mobile, and web development. They offer a blend of coding and real-world experience, which is the best way to learn. Find out more and support our show by going to fullsail.edu slash dnews. Thanks for watching.